Hi, I'm Erica Brooke, and on today's health and wellness segment, we are coming to you from the Morris Arboretum, and I am here with Jennifer Shelter, who is a yoga instructor and life coach um, whose leadership focuses on creativity, um, inspiration, and mindfulness. So we're really excited uh, to have you here today. Thank you. It's a gorgeous day. Great. It is. We're lucky to have this day, <laughs> especially in October. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so to get started, I um, just want to kind of get a little bit of background information and um, so how long have you been teaching yoga here at the Morris Arboretum and, and also in general? Well, I've been teaching at the Morris Arboretum every summer for the past decade and I've been teaching yoga and meditation and mindfulness for uh, almost 17 years. Oh wow. So it's been a study of mine and a passion of mine for over 20 years, I'd say. That's amazing. Yeah. And um, what kind of led you um, to your passion to, and to get into the you know, health and wellness field? I think it was really uh, actually a personal need. I think passion comes from uh, a longing or a deep curiosity about how do I experience that you know and although I was really a really healthy kid and a happy kid I also had some personal experiences in my life where I you know I was really really in need of that sense of inner peace and calm and self-trust and self-acceptance and although I may have looked a certain way on the outer edges, my image, you know, what I could project was one thing, but what I was feeling was totally different on another level. So that's how I got into it. I think it was just purely a personal um, journey. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's great. Um, so what is, you know, the main focus of your, of your yoga classes and how do they, you know, um, how, how are they different from what else is out there? Well, my main focus is always on you and what you most need and really making sure that the yoga class is very similar to going to see a great movie or a great play in that, or a great book in that every class is really a memoir or really geared towards what you want to experience. So on the physical level, what that means is I'm going to help each practitioner feel their body accept their body, work with their body, feel alignment and grace and stability and ease people into being in touch with themselves so that they can feel their uh, life force. Because most of the time we're not really educated to stay with ourselves. We're usually educated in gym to, you know, shoot a ball or to win. And most of the time we're, we're physically educating ourselves to win at something and where yoga is different from sort of normal gym or fitness is that there's no competition and you're not trying to win at anything other than to than to practice self-care and acceptance of where you are in your life and to yes build strength yes build flexibility yes build balance all those things are marvelous and also to really take care of the mind and to notice your mindset as you're moving, which is ultimately where that yoga, that union comes together of mind and body. That's great. There's so many different uh, elements that are a part of it. Yeah. Um, so you were kind of getting into this a bit, but it's known um, that yoga really helps to reduce stress and anxiety. Um, so. How would you, you know, explain? How would you explain how that, um, how we, your yoga classes kind of help to really um, improve one's, you know, mind and body? Well, I think it's, you know, we all have really a track of anxiety going in terms of fear. Really, there's two ways our mind is set: it's either fear or love, and it's tipping back and forth constantly. Can I be present? And if the answer is no, I'm too afraid to be present, we're going to slip back into our fear and anxiety and worry and, you know, rumination. Um, so what 
I always try to provide is a safe space, number one, to for people to breathe and let go long enough to feel themselves and be patient with relating to yourself. Because so much of the time we're educated to abandon ourselves in favor of some other image or some you know, commercial of how our life should be different. And at least as far as I can tell, that mindfulness is to bring it back, bring yourself back to the moment. Like right now, oh my god, it's so beautiful out, yes. and um, I could get all caught up in my head about what I have to do after this interview or where I'm going, but just to be with you and to stay here in this moment, I think is really valuable. It is a really good way. Um, to think about things. So now that we've kind of talked a little bit about the background, um, could you demonstrate maybe a basic yoga exercise? Sure, um, I'd love to. Absolutely. One thing would be to just um, breathe. I mean, it sounds really basic, but if if somebody can even um, sit in an upright posture, not necessarily like rigid, but just sit and relax for a moment. I'll do this along with you. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> sit and relax Great. for a moment and um, turn the palms face up and relax your jaw. And just close your eyes or let your eyes be soft. And then just enjoy a deep breath in and really breathe up into your heart region and into your lungs. And then just slowly exhale the breath. I know it sounds so basic, but in yoga it's called pranayama. And it's just taking a pause to your own dignity. So you're acknowledging yourself as dignified, as human. And that no matter where you are in the sort of vicissitudes or the scale of the rainbow, that... Um, be human is to feel. So how long would you do a breathing exercise? Like we do a breathing or? exercise in the beginning for probably two minutes. Just to let things settle. Okay. Do you know, because when people arrive at a yoga class, it's usually like they're coming <laughs> from work and you know what I mean? There's all right. that energy that's coming to the space. So really, uh, the practice is like a sanctuary, a refuge, a place to drop that or leave it at the door and or just practice working with what is happening in the moment. Sometimes people are grieving, sometimes people you know suffer from depression, mm -hmm. sometimes it's a basic workout, sometimes it's to move the body, but to be able to be with how our bodies change too, because if when we age, everything starts to shift and none of us think we're gonna ever age. <laughs> But it's a little bit of a cosmic joke, because we all are. And the ability to be okay as your body changes and age with grace um, is worthwhile to start. It begins starting with the breath. Um, so another question I had is, you know, what makes, what makes doing yoga outdoors so, so special? That's such a great question. Doing yoga outdoors, especially here at the Morris Arboretum, is such a gift. It's a chance to have a ritual in which you are in a sanctuary, a refuge, a space where this space is cultivated for beauty, natural beauty. And there's no clanking of weights, there's no kind of locker rooms, there's no none of the kind of gym vibe here. Um, it's extraordinary, obviously, today. The sunshine, the crickets, the trees and that experience of you know, whether you want to call it oneness or mother nature or abundance or you know however you call that source of peace to, you really sort of marinate in it when you do yoga outside. I love that word <laughs> you marinate and you feel it and you know you take it home with you and I think primordial 
in a very primal sense, all of us remember our childhood. And our childhood was the time when we explored and we felt really connected. Usually we feel connected to the earth in some way, whether it was riding bikes or mm -hmm. playing flashlight tag or doing something. And those imprints of that, the beauty of the earth, it gets evoked, I really believe, when you're around trees and the sky and uh, it just really deepens that sense of relaxation. Every summer we have yoga around the garden and yoga out on the limb here at the Morris Arboretum. And it's an incredible opportunity for people to come out to this incredible sanctuary where they can look out over the valley and breathe and relax and de-stress and feel great about themselves and their body. And then we also have yoga out on the limb, which is out in the treetops, really, which is an extraordinary um, resource as well to practice yoga. And in fact, it's amazing because it's set up underneath two huge trees, very much like a little um, temple. You know, it feels very much like you're under the canopy and this beautiful tree. And it's really extraordinary. So I would definitely encourage everyone to come to the Mars Sober Eden. That's great, yeah, it, it really is um, a fabulous environment um, for, for yoga and really, you know, connecting with it. So I'm going to show you a few things to ground that are very grounding and strengthening. Okay. So you'll bend your knees, that's it, and keep your back relatively flat, and you'll open your chest, palms out to the side, that's it. So you're going to inhale, reach overhead. Exhale, dive forward towards your knees, drop your head, inhale, come halfway, just bring your hands to your knees as you stretch forward, then exhale, fold, then inhale, press to the sky, feel your legs now, reach open the chest, reach all the way to the sky, give yourself a little baby back bend at the top. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> and then bend your knees, exhale all the way down. So you integrate the ground in the sky. You'll inhale, bring your knees, hands to knees. You'll exhale, fold. You'll inhale to the sky. Strong, 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 rooted, grounded. Open the chest as you reach. Spread those arms out. Yes. Give yourself a baby back bend. Oh, that right, you. that again. <laughs> Exhale to your heart. Just let your hands come to your heart. Beautiful. So, what would you recommend um, to someone who wants to get started in yoga? It's a great question. I'd recommend that they find a teacher that has been practicing yoga for at least five years. Um, because you can get certified and it's really easy to get certified but it doesn't mean that that person knows what they're doing. Just the way you would look for a surgeon or a doctor that could absolutely help you diagnose in a way that makes you feel good, um, I would do the same with a yoga teacher. Right. So before we go, I just wanted to ask you, do you have any um, upcoming events or classes that you'd like to tell us about? I do, in fact. Um, the upcoming event of uh, Forever Young Conference, uh -huh. which is the J.C. Klein event downtown in Philadelphia. That's coming up, I believe it's the first weekend in November. And people can find out about it by going to foreveryoung.com. Um, and then I'm also leading a fabulous retreat to Mexico, to Tulum, Mexico in March. Wow. And that's, that's a week-long uh, retreat. And there's mindfulness meditation, yoga, there's writing for self-discovery, journal writing, and free time to relax and rejuvenate and have a beautiful time. Um, and I'm doing a lot of workshops in the Philadelphia area as well for personal writing and mixing personal writing and yoga so that it's writing from the senses. Oh, I wanna um, thank you for being here today. Absolutely. I love, love, love supporting people in their inspiration to feel great about what they're doing in their life and that's really my mission is to inspire that creativity and that well-being so that people are 